Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's time for our hot topic. And we're talking about 16 of 26 power plants record 37% capacity amid incessant grid collapses. And joining us to have a conversation is Wisdom Chap Jumbo as a public affairs analyst. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. Nice Good morning. Welcome. All right. So we're talking about 16 um, of 26 power plants. They are um, below capacity at the moment. And we've been seeing, in fact, for me, I mean, I didn't have electricity for a couple of days, right? We've been seeing all of these grid collapses. And I would say this is the most we've seen in the past few years. So in the past few months, we've seen a lot of grid collapses, mm -hmm. even more than, let's say, four or five years combined, right? So what is the reason? Why, are the, why do we have about 16 of them below capacity? And why, why are the grid collapsing? Well, thank you for having me once again. Uh, first of all, we'll just start by uh, why, why are we having grid collapse recently. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've had like two this year, mm -hmm. and um, majorly the issue is vandalism. Um, you see, the Ministry of Power um, and TCN um, has also been doing this campaign um, around and raising the concern that there has been continuous uh, vandalization of uh, power infrastructures mm -hmm. um, in the country. And uh, if you vandalize any of those, for example, the towers, um, I mean, you're just making the grid to also collapse because uh, um, those infrastructures are key to making us have those power, you know, that we have. So first of all, vandalism is a major issue. Um, I mean, it has gone high uh, recently, unlike other years. Uh, but in previous years leading to now, I think the issue of uh, grid collapse has just been overworking the mm -hmm. grid itself, you know, the grid, like we like to say, the sector is really obsolete. Mm -hmm. um, what we have as a grid now should be what it is for a country of 200 million people. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are overworking it, you know. So when you overwork a system, it gets to a point and, and what happens is it's going to break down. Uh, another issue for the grid c collapse itself is uh, gas. Mm -hmm. So there seems to have been um, limited gas supply. Uh, to power some of these infrastructures, which of course we experienced that in the first grid collapse. I think it will, should that should be early this year, when there was you know power outage for about uh, two three weeks. I mean, in, in a, a week or two, you know. So uh, I think these are just some of the issues that have been causing uh, this grid collapse. But most recently, the major issue has been vandalism. Well, I don't know v vandalism. When you talk about people vandalizing uh, the equipment, the mm. infrastructure and all that, it means there is no security for these things. And in other countries, there's security for rail lines, there's mm. security for, for power lines and all that. Why is it such a, an issue in Nigeria? Why are the power lines not secure enough? Oh, yeah. I mean, these are key questions you've asked. Um, I think it's a question the Ministry of Power needs to constantly answer. Mm. Um, I see them doing the campaign more frequently now. Uh, I mean, report what you see, you know, because uh, it's becoming a big issue for them. Mm. Uh, but why are those uh, 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 infrastructures not secure enough? Um, it's, it's a question I'm not sure I can really tell myself because, mm. I mean, it should be a no-brainer yes. that when we have these facilities, it should really be, you know, secure enough, um, not just for anybody to work in. But Aside that, um, I mean, as a people, I think we need to, uh, there's, there's a culture issue where, I mean, how do you just go and destroy or vandalize something that is of benefit to not okay. just only you, mm -hmm. but to everybody? Uh, even though we are taxing the Ministry of Power to do its part and government to do its part to secure some of these facilities, I think as a people, we also need to, you know, have a rethink or reflection on ourselves. Um, how will people just go and see something that is serving the whole country, not just you, and then you want to go and destroy it? Yeah. You know, so this is really a big problem. And um, this is also an aspect where we need to look at the um, Nigeria Orientation Agency uh, to begin to also promote, you know, certain campaigns, you know, that also speaks to this, to help the Ministry of Power to say, you know, well, look, these are key things that, you know, powers as a people. Why we do need to go and be destroyed, no matter what the issue is. Mm. So, so I think it's a collective uh, shared effort for everybody. But I think this is something the Ministry of Power needs to lead. I see the Minister I mean, uh, Adila Bo is, is is doing a lot in this area, raising the concern. I see his tweets every now and then. Um, so we need to give them the support. 
Yeah, well, I, I, well, like you've said, it's a collective effort for mm. everybody. But I think the Ministry of Power should be able to have um, some security agencies that have mm. to be, you know, just have people man, manned outside each mm. power station yeah. to ensure that not just anybody can, can go can there. Can, there yeah, yes, we're talking of that. Give the incentives to communities. Yeah. Are, mm. Mm. Because in this, these facilities or infrastructures are in different communities. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, maybe let's just speak to how we are decentralizing security itself yeah. uh, a lot of the work on community policing and yeah, all of those things yeah. you know so there's a broader picture to all of this you know because if the different communities where you have these infrastructures are, are, are maybe getting the incentives are maybe getting that yes to, to make sure you know they protect some of these things maybe it's an approach yeah uh, i'm not sure the strategy the ministry of power is using mm -hmm. um, as regards this yeah. you know but it should be one way to look at it yeah. to say you know what these things serve the country yeah. you know let's not uh, and most of this vandalism is even you know from the north central down to the north and also there's a lot happening there even the south the little of even the south but i think there's just some reports on yeah. things happening down down the north that we need to really look at i think they need to go to the drawing board and explore mm. every option i yeah. think here we're giving like two options yeah exactly but just going there and exploring every option because yes. at the end of the day you're, th you're talking about security and mm. that should be paramount because mm. we can't be having a national grid collapsing like every now and then in fact it's embarrassing this year for the second time <laughs> it, was, it was super embarrassing when when the electricity companies now came out or oh, minister of power celebrated what was it 100 days of uninterrupted or oh, mm -hmm. grid not collapsing mm -hmm. and i was like what? people are celebrating 50 years of yes. uninterrupted power <laughs> you're celebrating a, a week after that the grid collapsed <laughs> and, and after that maybe within the same month it's collapsed like uh, mm -hmm. twice or so yes. and all that but now if you are very inconsistent in mm. nigeria they say you just they behave like nepa something about the fact that this uh, infrastructure is obsolete and we mm -hmm. agree with you mm -hmm. in some countries according to one of our, our analysts the 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 electricity that comes to 200 million Nigerians is what goes to maybe one mall or one mosque or mm. something. That is true. But here, we are sharing less than 4,000 megawatts in a country of 200 million. So fortunate. So which means we really need an upgrade of this uh, yes. infrastructure. Yes. But is it so hard to upgrade mm. the existing infrastructure to what you think will be the standard that can mm. serve Nigeria? Wow, but that's a good question. Um, it's one question we have also been asking within the sector, within the space. But well, I'll tell you something, uh, which I think we are on the path towards that. Uh, the Nigeria Electricity Act that was passed sometime last year is sort of a way, you know, to work this out. You know, so that act now helps to decentralize power to the states, mm. you know, and the states can now not only generate, they can distribute and transmit, mm. and they can make their own laws. Uh, I think presently about four states or five states, you know, have been able to create their own electricity market and their policy which is a way to go so when you decentralize it and relieve the national grid of that overworking then you make it easier you are beginning because i'm sure some of those states what they are now what they will now put as uh, those infrastructures in their state will not be as obsolete as what we have as a yeah. national grid yeah. so again when we reduce the stress on the body when we reduce the stress you know on the national grid itself and every state begin you know, to create their own markets. Uh, you can see what Abia State has done. Yeah. Um, you can see, I know Edo State, you know, has also had their own policy. Lagos State has had their own policy also. By the time every single state begin to take ownership of providing power in their different states, we reduce the burden on our national grid, you know. And the question of, is obsolete, why can't we do the upgrade? Why can't we change it? I think it's a, it's, a, it's a very good question that we constantly ask government. Mm. You know, what is taking this... In 2013, when we privatized, you know, the sector, one, we hoped that that would have been the change, mm -hmm. you know, the old goal would have experienced. But unfortunately, up to now, it's still something that uh, we don't even understand why we are still, you know, using the same system to serve 200 million people. Mm -hmm. So I, I think this year, going into the, as we go into this year, I, I want to see a lot of states, let's see what they can come up with. Mm -hmm. Let's see how they define those policies, they decentralize the act, mm -hmm. you know, and create those different markets. 
and hopefully uh, and again in the mix of things we include renewable energy sources like mm -hmm. solar yeah. you know in different states you know so we see a lot of things in the mix which is why the act itself um, allows for those mix with mm -hmm. renewable energy sources which of course i think can also relieve the grid um, of yeah, all of these true. issues mm -hmm. and then we have the issue of gas you know which is also a big problem uh, uh, for the for the Jenkos, you know, uh, and all of that. I mean, there's been a rise of about thirty one percent. So I mean, if we fix the issue of our outside, <laughs> yeah, I need to know that. If we if we if we if we solve the problem of gas itself, um, I, I think that goes a long way. You would think Nigeria having so much gas reserve, mm -hmm. we should not have a problem with the gas, but there are infrastructural issues, you know, that has limited us a lot on the issue of uh, gas, mm -hmm. you know, which. We also need to look at, you know, so that uh, that solves the problem uh, uh, for our power. So there's a lot of things in the mix of things. Right. Okay, so I want to talk about, um, you know, privatization. Yes. Now, we know that there is the discos, right? Mm -hmm. um, but people are calling for privatization for the entire sector. Mm -hmm. Do you think that would help? And let me just put into context. We had the telecommunications industry mm -hmm. that we had Nitel at that point. Mm -hmm. And then when there was privatization, now you have several ones. Mm -hmm. So there is some form of competition and then you know that it's a service-based industry. Yeah. So you definitely want to give good services because that, you know, brings more revenue to you. Mm -hmm. So now people are calling for privatization of the um, entire electricity energy sector. Do you think that would be a good way to go and that way we might not be having the grid collapses as we're seeing right mm. now and also another question is if we have that for instance can nigerians afford the rates because we're talking about tariff as well obviously if we privatize this no matter the amount it is we have no choice but to pay yeah. and some people would argue for me i would rather you know pay that high tariff than to be burning diesel mm. every night because diesel is expensive there is also the noise pollution yes. there's a lot in the mix right oh, oh. so if there is privatization in nigeria for the energy sector is it going to be a good way to go and do you think it, the the tariff will be affordable for nigerians i mean this is what we did in 2013 uh, the sector was privatized in 2013. No, the argument is no, 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 no. only a section of it. Yes. It's not all. So we're yes. talking about so that, 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 we're talking that's about transmission. Going. But that's where I was going. Um, we did that in 2013. I mean, not the entire value chain. Mm -hmm. You know, government still held on to a certain part of it. Yes. You know, we also need to look at that. But I think the bigger issue in all of this uh, privatizational conversation is uh, allowing Nigerians to pay for the actual cost of the power they consume. And I, and I believe Nigerians are willing to pay. Um, a lot of Nigerians are willing to pay. Because Sorry, it is excuse me. I'm, going to, I'm just <laughs> going to cut you there, right? Nigerians are willing to pay, yes. right? Um, a few months ago, mm. or a few weeks ago, the Minister of Power had come out to say they wanted to take out electricity yes. subsidy. Yes. Although that's a lot, because yes. petrol subsidy is gone. Yes. We're seeing the hike in transportation. Yes. Yes. Still adding yes. the um, so electricity. Like the times we are in, exactly. it's going to look like more burden. Uh, and then Nigerians don't mind paying for, mm. you know, what they consume as long as I'm seeing the power. That's so what, if we it. pay for that, are we going mm. to see 24 hours? Maybe I honestly, if I'm mm. being honest with you, I can manage 18 hours. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not going to be greedy. But, but, but being to be honest, <laughs> yes. um, the people who can afford power the way it is, even now with the subsidy, are mm. quite few. You understand that the tariff you pay in Lekki. Is it's different, different from what they pay in uh, Ikorodu. Ikorodu, for instance, mm -hmm. and uh, that's what like the place like Magodo pays. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so they pay higher uh, for people to uh, get more electricity, and mm -hmm. others are not able to uh, get as much electricity because the tariff is low. So people are still complaining mm -hmm. even at this time. So, do you think the majority of Nigerians who would want to use this electricity, like she asked, mm -hmm. can afford it? Hmm. I think the assurance, first of all, I mean, thinking like an ordinary Nigerian, I think is that trust that will the power be available. Mm. Um, I think Nigerians, uh, um, they are so resilient that, I mean, they can get, you know, what they want to get. But I think it's that assurance, that trust. If I w I'm willing to pay for this, will I get the power I'm paying for? So, which is now more work on government and the sector itself. To say, look, can we assure Nigerians that if we say we'll give them 20 hours, 24 hours, 
and and they will pay so amount of money will this power be available remind be reminded that also businesses can you know benefit from this largely because they're spending a chunk of their resources you know to provide power for themselves you know where i live uh, and there's a bank or there are two banks close to me and, and when i hear the generator every single time i just worry how much a loan a branch consumes right. you know, on diesel just to keep the, ba the bank running mm -hmm. and atms and everything it's a lot if we can provide power for businesses uh, you will imagine that uh, this uh, companies or organization businesses will have more money to put back to even employ more people mm. and that tells on the economy itself you know so i think the issue is trust you know can we trust that if we say we will pay this amount will this power be available yeah will you not come and tell me one month after uh, that the grid has collapsed again <laughs> yeah, when, when we're talking about availability we have to talk about yes. availability of the funds to pay <laughs> we have we're running on a 35,000 naira mm -hmm. minimum wage NLC is crying for a lot more mm -hmm. and Nigerians are saying even 50,000 they are not able to pay how can so mm -hmm. imagine someone earning 50,000 will he be cut off because if now people are paying maybe mm. 10,000 before the end of the month, mm. they, the lowest person who, mm. is, who has a prepaid meter is mm. paying 10,000 and then you're earning 25,000. You've not talked about going to work. You've not talked about buying Gary, mm. which uh, has a small rubber paint mm. uh, that used the to go for, for, for yeah. 800, yeah. now going up to 3,000. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. if you remove all these things, you find out that your life remains, your life ends in one week. <laughs> Mm. Yeah, well, that's that's the, that's what's <laughs> called make ends meet. So you just you just you just you get to the end. End. You, you cannot buy that. You cannot transfer <laughs> yourself to work. You cannot. <laughs> Yesterday, you know, when I when I saw the debits alone myself, I'm like, oh my goodness, things have it's, really gone up. Yeah, so, yeah, so I, I can understand the the I mean the concern. I mean, with everything happening, is this the best time? You know, if we even want to, you know, take uh, out the subsidy to, to remove the subsidy on power and all of that, but. I think the sector itself is been it's it's hitting so hard, and uh, I can imagine how much losses, for example, the discos, you know, make. You mm. know, uh, the, the, the losses are a lot. You know, so we need to sit down to agree if we want to make this available in a way for Nigerians. How much will it really cost? How can we begin to gradually make this easier for Nigerians? Because I, I know for sure. I mean, it's it's cheaper than even buying the diesel and, yes, and, and, the, and the petrol you look at the cost of petrol in the last one year leading to now look at how the increase has gone yeah you can you can imagine how much you know people must have consumed reason why most of the time i always project you know solar to a lot of people mm -hmm. you know because that will save you a lot of cost in the long run really you can only the initial cost to get a solar for your house might be a bit high mm -hmm. but when you look at it in the long run itself you have saved so much money because your panels can last 20 years wow. your batteries the good lithium batteries uh, can last you for at least five to seven years mm. so imagine the cost you will save for the next five years you don't even have to remember i know people that don't even remember that there is nepalites as we call it oh, wow. you know because they, are, they have moved to solar i have also moved to solar because it, it's it's that's the only sustainable way I mean, to, to, to but should but shouldn't the government be able to provide power for you like are we supposed to be so it it you right? <laughs> yes and then well, another, another concern, for ourselves. Yeah, power power and and another power concern power. i have is if we're seeing the national grid collapse in like twice in a month are we going to get to the point where it's collapsing like every other day? Is it going to get to that irreparable it, it almost state? Got that, it, got, it, got to, it almost got it to that. Almost got to that. Well, the, the collapse was, was consistent. Mm. You know, it was a big issue. You know, so the moment I don't see light for 24 hours, I just go to Twitter to check the grid has collapsed. Yeah, same. You know, <laughs> so it, it's so what's really the way issue. forward now as we wrap mm. it up? What's the way, like, how can we ensure that we have um, a sustainable energy sector in Nigeria? What would you advise the government to do at this point? Well, I see what the Ministry of Power is doing, um, engaging stakeholders constantly. Mm. Uh, MEC is also engaging uh, 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 stakeholders constantly. That is good. Yeah. We need to continue to engage on the way forward. We also need to look at how we can support different states mm. as they decentralize uh, uh, to begin to get power for themselves, their policies and all of that. I know NEC is providing support in different ways for those states. That is a good way to go. Yeah. And then we need to fix the issue of gas. I, I like what President Tinubu did when he came into office. 
he created um, um, a ministry, I mean, a minister for state for gas. Mm. And that shows how important, uh, I mean, the government sees this issue of gas, which is good. Mm. So we need to look at that entire gas value chain and give stakeholders how can we improve this. We need this to power the country. Mm. What do we? What are the infrastructural needs? You right. know, uh, and we need to put in place. You know, mm. where are we lacking? That? Because there's also vandalism yeah. uh, um, in, in that area, which has made some uh, um, uh, multinationals are also leaving the mm. onshore. Yeah. You know, to go uh, offshore. You know, so what is happening within there? Mm. How do we fix it? Yeah. That I see MNPC is leading that with security agencies a lot around the Niger Delta region. We need to do more of that. Okay. Yes. So I think these are just some of the ideas uh, we can uh, yeah. uh, put together to see how do we fix this power issue. We can fix it. We can. I'm not sure it's a website. We'll keep, we'll keep we keep praying. We can. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. We've been speaking with um, Will Wisdom, Chap Jumbo. I remember. <laughs> And we've just been talking about the energy sector and how the incessant grid collapses have been. And hopefully, we, we just hope that, you know, everything will be sorted and then the government would give um, the adequate resources for the energy sector. And we want to say thank you for coming. Thank you so much. Thank for you. Thank All you. right. We'll go on a short break. And when we return, we'll be looking at our next hot topic. Please stay with us.